Swing of the axe. I went for a run yesterday. I put this song on because someone suggested that I, well, actually it's my wife, someone suggested to my wife that I listen to Spotify and I hated Spotify because I typed in a song and it never show up. I played something else. And this was the first song that appeared on there so I figured, well, I'll give it a try. Oh, I'm so glad I did. The spirit of might landed on me and it went running through the park. I felt like I was just burning through devils, man, because there's like, like tons of Muslims in there. I didn't care. Let them look me in the eye and just get incinerated, you know? <laughs> wasn't me. And uh, you can tell from my Facebook post that I was in something pretty extreme yesterday. I felt pretty hammered in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and uh, I was like meditating on my bed, like, what is the axe of the Lord? And uh, I got a pretty cool download for you. There's lots of scriptures here today, so we're going to go through them. First place I'd like to look is Deuteronomy 20. It says, When thou shalt besiege a city a long time, in making war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them. And thou shalt not cut them down, for the tree of the field is man's food to employ them in the siege. And verse 20. Only trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat, or basically they don't have fruit on them, <laughs> thou shalt destroy and cut them down. Swing of the axe. <laughs> That tells me, if you don't have fruit on your branches, watch out. <laughs> this is, it's time to get the fruit of the Spirit to pop out of your branches, man. And that's not something you produce, it's something that's produced through intimacy with the vine. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the vine dresser, he'll trim us, but he'll also use us to cut down everything that was built upon flesh. I'll get into that later, I'm getting ahead of myself. But I noticed how it says here in verse 20, thou shalt destroy and cut them down. And man, God's not kidding. <laughs> Wait, when he says that, only trees, only trees with fruit on them, don't destroy them. Hallelujah. So let's look at uh, 1 Samuel 13 verse 20 and we'll get a deeper understanding of what it is to be in the hand of the Lord <laughs> with the swing of the axe but all the Israelites whoa there you are Holy Spirit <laughs> thank you let the increase come of your presence in the revelation understanding <laughs> this trust me it gets better as we go on you're like man is this guy out of his mind <laughs> maybe <laughs> but all the Israelites <laughs> But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share and his coulter, I don't even know what that, and his axe, and his mattock. I, write down, I wrote down here, Israel went to the Philistines to sharpen their axe because they were in fear. Fear will always make you do that, run to the world. <laughs> It's the wrong fear, man. You need the fear of the Lord to be stronger than the fear of a demon. Because He'll make you sharp. He'll quicken you with might in the inner man. I love the spirit of might. The spirit of might will cut through all the hordes of devils. Just using one. All he needs is one. <laughs> a berserker. <laughs> you know? Hallelujah. Here he goes. Uh, uh, went to the Philistines to sharpen their axe because they were in fear. But Jonathan rose up in faith like a berserker, and he slew about 20 men, because he was a battle axe in the hand of the Lord. <laughs> the Bible says that God is a man of war, and his weapons of war, we're going to get into that in a bit. <laughs> it's in Jeremiah, but I'm not going to get there yet, because I want to I go through a little bit of a foundation. Once, don't remember, don't cut down the fruit trees. They're bearing fruit. Hallelujah. Destroy. 
everything that doesn't bear fruit. Hallelujah. Jesus is only coming back for those in Christ, right? Everything outside of Christ, what does the scripture say about that? Hallelujah. Anyways, I'll get back to that. I'm, I'm leaving, I'm going too far ahead of myself. I'm gonna have to redo this and calm down a little bit. I drank an entire coffee and did some curls. <laughs> But this is really good. I love this, man. This is berserker stuff. If you're not a berserker, just, <laughs> just shut it off and just continue. Go to one of my videos with the soft music and the relaxation and the anointing will just, you know, soothe you and make you feel comfortable because he's the comforter of Halloween. <laughs> well, this is for my berserker friends out there who just don't give a rip what comes against them. Use my life, Lord. Anything you want to do, anywhere you want to send me, release me like a flaming polished arrow in the bow of the Lord. <laughs> but today we're not we're not arrows today. Today we're the battle axe in the hand of the Lord. Anyways, it gets better though. There is there is a price to this which we're gonna get into in the next thing. So yeah, Jonathan slew like about 20 men because he stepped out in faith and cut through that spirit of fear. And all he had with him was one shield bearer. Hallelujah. It shook the entire nation. <laughs> you know what? All it takes is one. <laughs> one possessed by God can shake the nation. Hallelujah. Moses, Jesus, the Apostle Paul. Why not you? <laughs> why not me? All you got to do is just be open like a tree of life, bearing that fruit. Anyways. <laughs> uh, the second pla third place I want to go is 2 Kings. This is where it starts getting pretty epic. 2 Kings 6 verse 5. But there was... Okay, these are the sons of the prophets. They're like, let's go... Uh, uh, Behold, now the place where we dwell is too straight for us. Let us go, I pray, there into the Jordan, and make blah, 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 blah. If we go to verse 5 of 2 Kings, uh, chapter 6. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried, saying, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. I love this part, man. Therefore, said he, oh, wait. And the man of God, this, this was Elijah. Elisha. The man of God said, where fell it? And he showed him a place and he cut down a stick and cast it in hither and the iron did swim. Come on, man. Some of you people feel so detached from God. It's like, God, help. I, I can't, I don't feel attached to you. I'm, you're, you know, I'm the body, you're the head. Where are you? I gave a teaching a couple videos back about how to have the abiding presence of God, the abiding presence of Jesus. He, think of, look at what he did. He cut a stick and he threw that stick into the water. It's written in another place that somebody else took a stick and threw it in and the bitter waters were made sweet. The only thing that can do that is the cross. You deny yourself. You deny yourself. And you're so dead to yourself that all you can do is allow the Holy Spirit to flow through you. Come on, you want to get attached to your head, you got to go through the cross. I wrote down here in my little daily devotions. <laughs> I haven't done this in so long, just taking notes, you know, writing down, doing a Bible study on the battle axe of the Lord, the swing of the axe. But this is what I wrote. A borrowed axe head fell in the water when Elisha found the place. He threw in a stick. We know that's a cross, come on. And the axe head swam to the stick. Only those who died on the cross live on the other side of it. You gotta go through the cross. You gotta go through the precious blood of Jesus. His crucifixion is our crucifixion too. And he died for the joy set before him. He didn't, he didn't die on the cross to remain on the cross of, of pain and suffering for eternity. Come on. He died on the cross for us to bring many sons into glory. What's in the glory? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. By beholding Him, we become into His image, by, just by beholding Him. And when God sees that, I talked about Zacchaeus climbing up into a sycamore tree, how Jesus came to him, called him by name, and then he went down and received him joyfully, <laughs> you know? 
Hey, come on. You got to go through the cross. And then that spirit of joy is like the spirit of might. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You can burn through a horde of devils. Try it. Nothing can stop you. You are a berserker in the hand of the Lord. You don't care if you lose your own life. You're already crucified with Christ. <laughs> man, what, what's man going to do? What, what could a demon do? I'm on fire. I'm a blazing battle axe in the hand of the Lord. <laughs> Step back, because here comes the swing of the axe. <laughs> Today's your lucky day. <laughs> here we go. Let's keep going. Uh, I don't even know if this is a Christian song. I just saw John the Baptist prophesying. <laughs> Today's your lucky day. <laughs> you know, hallelujah, whatever. I don't even care. <laughs> Oh, let the anointing sort everything out. <sighs> Shaka. Only those who die on the cross live on the other side of it. The joy set before him. Draw near to God. He will draw. He'll swim near to you. Hallelujah. He'll attach to you. You'll feel attached to your head. His spirit will bear witness with your spirit that you are the son of God. That you're his child. <laughs> that you're infused with power from on high. And he'll strengthen you with might in the inner man. So that that inner man can pop out of your man. <laughs> pop out of your man <laughs> like fruit to destroy the works of the devil. What destroys the works of the devil? It's not you. It ain't flesh. Jesus Christ went about destroying the works of the devil. And he only did what he saw his father doing. It was the anointing that does the works. He said, it, I myself can do nothing. It's the Father who does the works. It's the Spirit of God. Not by might nor by power, but the Spirit of the Lord does the works. And it, it, with his mighty dunamis power, it's released through anyone who, who goes through the cross and yields to him in any, every shape, way, form possible. Okay, the next scripture, it gets better now. This is Isaiah 11, 5 to 26. This is just simply dealing with one of the things that pops up when you get used by the Lord. I don't even know if I need to read it, but I'll read it anyway. Uh, hold on. Isaiah, 11, Isaiah 10, verse 15. This is a question you can ask yourself. Shall the, boast, shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth? therewith <laughs> or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it as if the rod should shake itself against him that lifted it up or as the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood <laughs> therefore shall the Lord hit the Lord of hosts send among his fat ones leanness and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, man, you're just the battle axe. It's the Lord who swings through us. <laughs> you know, all your accusers may come against you, and uh, all you do is you stand your holy ground, and out of your heart an arm will form. <laughs> will come the swing of the axe. You don't got to do it. All you do is you stand your holy ground speaking to the Word of God, and let the Word of God speak through you. And he'll sort everything out. Hallelujah, man. So, uh, what did I write here? Oh, yeah. It's just pride. Are you dealing with pride? Are you going to say to God, like, this is what we're going to do? This is how I want to do it? No, you yield. A weapon in the hand of the Lord. The Lord's the one who moves the weapon. You just, like, watch, watch him cut through demon heads. Watch him destroy pride. You're just... Like the rock, Christ is the rock, but you're the stone built within those those many houses. You know, I mean, the, I can't even talk. I'm so excited about it. We are like living stones built up into a holy temple of the Lord, and He whips the whole temple to destroy mindsets in others. You know, casting down imaginations that exalt itself against the revelation knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Let's get back to the main thing here. The last, the second last verse I want to look at is Jeremiah 51, verse 20. This is where I wanted to go. This is, to me, like this is the word right here. This is this is the sum of everything. What's going on? My iPad's going a little bit. This is like thus saith the Lord. 
Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee, I will break in pieces the nations. And with thee, I will destroy kingdoms. And with thee, I will break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee, I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. With thee will I break in pieces old and young. With thee will I break in pieces young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces... I want to stop right here for a second. Whoever falls upon the rock will be broken, but whoever he falls upon, he'll grind them to powder. It's so that people can fall upon the rock and be saved. Or get ground to powder. <laughs> Listen, let's continue this. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherds of his flock. With thee will I break in pieces the husband and husbandmen and his yoke of oxen. With thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and unto the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion. In your sight, saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. I put a, I put a word in, in my Facebook about, uh, like, Jesus ain't no weak, weak, limp little pussy. He's like a raging, <laughs> fire blazing. He's going to release blazing glory through you to destroy those who destroy the earth. I don't remember the exact quote I put, but it was like, how is it this berserker anointing? I couldn't even type it properly. It was just like, I was, man, it felt so good. It's like caramel anointing and like Holy Spirit wide just mixed together. Wisdom has mixed her wide. And you just feel invincible. You are invincible in your spirit, man. You'll get to the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and so, uh, yeah, I kind of wrote that down. It was con it confirmed to me this morning as I went, as I read this. I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth. To me, those are the fallen angels that destroyed the earth. The 200 that fell and then went into women in Genesis uh, chapter 6 or whatever, they're the sons of God. Uh, and roll thee down from the rocks and make thee a burnt mountain and they shall not take thee a stone of a corner nor a stone for foundations but thou shalt be desolate forever saith the Lord it goes on set thee up a standard in the land blow the trumpet among the nations prepare the nations against her that, basically that whore of Babylon but if you go to verse 20 he says Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. You are the battle axe of the Lord, his weapons of war. God is a man of war. His weapon is you. Yielded to him. <laughs> God's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Remember it says the days of Noah. He's going to kill the flesh by his spirit flowing through you. He'll uproot, pull down, and destroy all things that uh, offend life. You know, not offend, but anything that isn't life. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken out of the heavens. Holy Spirit, Shabba. Shabbat again. So the only things that are unshakable remain, and that is everything that's in the glory, everything that's in the rock, everything that's in the glory <laughs> will remain. Hallelujah. Uh, I got one more page here. This is the last part of scripture I want to look at. This is the most important part of scripture that I want to look at. What is all this? I woke up with a phrase. I, I wrote it down here. It's uh, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. So of course, I had to go look it up. And it was right in there with the word act. So it's all tied together in this Matthew 3 10 to actually Matthew 3 7 to 12 if you want to just get it all in context but when he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism Holy Spirit he said unto them O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come what is this wrath to come you speak of John 
He saw the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. What was his baptism? We're going to explore these things right now. He called them a generation of snakes, generation of serpents, generation of satans. <laughs> Who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruit, meat for repentance. Let's go back to the other thing. Take the axe and hit the trees and destroy the trees that do not bear fruit. But don't touch the trees, the, the trees that have fruit. It is written. <laughs> what is this wrath to come? Why can't we just all love each other? <laughs> the love of God is intoxication on his manifest presence and full obedience to his presence. Full obedience to his voice. Unless you love me, you will not keep my commandments, Jesus said. What is this wrath of God? <laughs> the wrath of the Almighty, the great wine press of the Lord Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah, shaka. <laughs> oh man. Bring forth therefore fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. Let your fruits prove your repentance. If I don't see any fruits of the Holy Ghost on you, there is no evidence whatsoever that you have repented. What are you repenting of? Your sins? Yeah, that's the most basic. You're not just repenting of your sins though, you're repenting of anything that is fallen. Repentance is just being repositioned back in Christ the way it was in the very beginning where Adam walked with God in the glory. You want to repent? You don't just stop sinning. You get in the Holy Ghost who puts to death the deeds of the flesh. You start reading the Word of God in the Holy Ghost so you can understand it the way it was meant to be given by the author himself through a revelatory experience of the tree of life, the fruit of the Spirit, not the knowledge of good and evil, of information and flesh. Cut that tree down at the roots, man. Anything that Paul said that I wish to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Why? Because he knows on the other side of that is the fruit of the Holy Ghost. That brings forth fruits unto true repentance. It proves you've repented. Hallelujah. I wrote here, the fruits of the Holy Spirit is proof of your repentance. If there's no fruits of the Holy Spirit in your life, there is no evidence that you have repented. Let's keep going on. Oh, shaka. <laughs> and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You're depending on the arm of flesh, the manifestation of flesh. Abraham's our father. Listen, God don't have no grandchildren. You're like, the, you sound like the foolish virgins. Give us some of your oil so that we can see. <laughs> God doesn't have no grandchildren. You don't live off secondhand revelation. You gotta go to the him who sells to get eye salve upon your eyes so you can see. You gotta go to Jesus Christ yourself to have that salvation experience yourself so that you can experience God yourself like Zacchaeus waiting in the cross so it's symbolically speaking so that he could see Jesus for who he was because it wasn't enough to hear the opinions of his pastor, his mom, his uncle, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, the Pope. Man, all these opinions about Jesus are irrelevant until you have an experience yourself with the tree of life. Because it is just knowledge about how good he is. It is just knowledge with people cursing. They're like saying, well, how bad Jesus is. The opinions of men are worthless. Because Jesus said to Peter, like, who do people say do I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Peter, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I'm telling you, your name is Peter, which is rock. And now the gates of hell will not prevail against this. What is this? Against you. What is you? What is this thing that the gates of hell will not prevail against? The revelation 
given by God himself that Jesus is the Christ. It's an experiential revelation knowledge that God reveals to your spirit that Jesus is the Christ and you receive the Christ. You get baptized into the Lord as one spirit and then he, you just become the battle axe of the Lord. <laughs> It's no longer you living anymore, but it's Christ living through you. It's no longer your will anymore. Have your will, Lord. Do whatever you want to do. It's God living through you. It doesn't matter how foolish it looks to the world. Because you don't live before the world. You live before your Father in heaven. You only see your Father in heaven and His works coming through you. And the people around you, the opinions, you don't stare at them. Zacchaeus did not stare at the opinions of men, at those accusing him that he's got to be against the sinner. No, he stood there looking at Jesus, repenting, continually repenting. If I've wronged anyone, I'll restore him fourfold because I see the purity in you and I want to be just like you. You're my influence. You're my role model. You're my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now. Shabbat. What did I just read here? Oh, yeah. We have Abraham to our father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Depending on genealogy for your salvation. No, man. This is a new order coming. It's You're going to be born of the spirit. The flesh profits nothing. It doesn't matter if your dad's a pastor. whoop de dick My father in heaven is my pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, which verse are we on here? Okay, verse 10. And now, say now. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and is cast into the fire. Good fruit? There is no one good but God. <laughs> You know, you want good fruit, it's fruit that remains. It's fruit that cannot be shaken. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And now, also, the axe is laid to the root of the trees. The axe is laid to the root of the trees. What's God saying? I mean, He's going to take you, He's going to use you as a battle axe of the Lord to cut down that knowledge, that information about God that doesn't have any power to transform a heart. He's cutting that thing down. You know, destroy this temple in three days, I'll build it up. We're gonna be living from it. Been, we're stepping into the third day. We've stepped into the third day. Into heavenly places in Christ. I'll raise it up. <laughs> we sit with Christ in heavenly places. Our communion is in heaven. We no longer know anyone after the flesh, but after the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that discernment is by the Holy Spirit, not your intellectual knowledge? Full discern he leads you into all truth. He is our discernment. The depth of your relationship with Holy Spirit is the depth of your discernment that you have to those around you. You know, until you see the invisible, you will not understand the visible. You will have to see the visible through the invisible. How eyes fall upon your eyes. <laughs> Go to him who sells. What do you what do, what do you how do you pay this price? You die to yourself and receive the free gift of salvation. <laughs> God made it so easy for us. Hallelujah. And now, also, the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Come on, you are that axe. You're the battle axe of the Lord and the hand of the Lord. Cutting down every thought, every imagination, just by your communion with the Lord, just by the overflow of your fruit, busting out of the branches and spilling on people the juice of the Lord. Just spilling on, spraying people everywhere you go with the manifestation of the presence of God, the fruit of the Spirit, the joy of the Lord, the patience that comes from only knowing God, the peace of God that passes all understanding, theology, doctrines, and things of man or even of demons, the, the peace of God. It's a peace and He is God. <laughs> you take a chunk of God and just go Poo! into people's spirits like, oh, I didn't know God was real. Years ago, I had this dream, and there was this this brother, so to speak, standing at the edge of a cliff, and he was gonna jump. And I went up to him, and I just laid hands on him. I didn't, I didn't like, don't do it. I just put my hands on his shoulders like this, and the power of God went, Boo! and he hit his eyes wide, and he looked 
I didn't know. And he, he didn't know God was real because no one revealed to him the fruit of the Holy Spirit. They, he only received knowledge of good and evil about God. God is good. Yeah, God. they talked about God, but they didn't release the Spirit of God upon him. And he didn't know. He didn't jump. He didn't kill himself. He didn't commit suicide because the presence of God saved him. He used me in a dream to be the battle axe of the Lord. To cut off that mindset that separates us. That happened in the beginning because of the knowledge of good and evil. That partaking of that fruit never brings us into experience with God. Only the tree of life does. The tree of life is Jesus Christ himself that came down from heaven to feed the entire world his spirit. Anyways, and now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Come on. Bear fruit that remains. That prove your repentance by spending time with the living God. And that time well spent with the living God will produce fruits out of your hearts. <laughs> Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. What is that rivers of living water for? Out of your heart? To baptize. Hold on. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's keep going. Verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Shaka. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Where are those shoes? The gospel of peace. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. It's John the Baptist, the baptizer, was considered the greatest of the old order because Jesus Christ himself said so. Why? Because he prepared the way of the Lord by baptism. So who's the greatest in the new order? The least? <laughs> yeah. The ones who baptize and prepare the way of the Lord. How do you baptize? As Peter, Peter spoke, the Holy Spirit came down and baptized them in the book of Acts. You baptize with the rivers of living water proceeding from your innermost being. It's just by letting the river of life flow through your heart. Not being religious at all. Being spiritually connected to the Holy Spirit. He flows through your spirit. He flows through your gates. He flows through your mouth. He flows through your eyes. He flows through your ears. He flows through your heart. He flows through your words. He fills every avenue of your life. Let's read this again. And now the, oh yeah. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. It's the washing of the water of the word, but he also baptized them in the water as a sign unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Who are, who are you in? You're in the one who is mightier than him. What does he do? <laughs> Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. That's that rivers of living water flowing from your innermost being. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit coming through and forth out of your branches, feeding those. And the birds of the air will come land on your branches and just be absorbed again, soothed in that, that fruit of the Spirit. The birds of the fowls of the air. Come on. People who don't know, they're looking for something. The New Agers, the, the people who lost in religion, they're looking for something that's real and tangible. You got, it's your job to release the fruit of the Holy Spirit and baptize them in the river of love. Baptize them in the joy of the Lord. Baptize them in the peace of God that passes all understanding. Baptize them in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. <laughs> baptize them in the glory of God. Just through your relationship with the glory of God. God is the glory. Hallelujah. His shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And what else? Fire! You gotta run through that flaming sword, guarding the tree of life. Just go, bah! let it crucify your flesh. Burn up all the flesh as a living sacrifice, and then partake of that tree. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life in him. He, Jesus said, whoever does not, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. You gotta go for that flaming sword, which is the word of God on fire because your heart is burning for the word of God. And you just, you understand the scriptures because your heart is on fire for God. Our God is consuming fire. You gotta go through God. Let your heart burn. It burns away the wood, burns away the chaff, burns away the stubble. So the only thing left is those those flaming, fiery stones of God. 
just manifesting God into the world. You are a living epistle. You're a living and you're an epistle. You're a living stone written on by the finger of God because God's touched you and that anointing pours through you and it touches and breaks those free around you so that they come into the same glory that you're walking in through experience. Because your words open up the heavens because you've seen and heard and touched the word of God. You're not clothed in fig leaves, coverings of men, looking up and all you see is branches and trees. You look because you've seen and encountered the living God. You can look to Him and see the heavens are open. You can see the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man because you've had an encounter with the Son of Man, which is the living word of God. And as your heart burns for Him, He comes through your heart. And He just like, He pulls those, <laughs> you know, <laughs> who are trapped in bondage. The anointing breaks the yoke and just sets them free. Glory. <laughs> Anyways. And now the act says, okay, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he coming after me is mightier than I. That sounds like he has the spirit of might. He's mightier than I. <laughs> And whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That fire so that you can see him. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. How do you get a pure heart? You, you just abide in that consuming fire. Refine even seven times at least. <laughs> you know, refiner's fire, my heart's one desire. <laughs> you know, let him just refine you. The fire of God doesn't feel good to the flesh. But it sure feels good in the spirit. Hallelujah, man. <laughs> Whose fan is in his hand. <laughs> Holy Spirit, Shabbat. Whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner and will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This fire cannot be stopped. Hallelujah. And then, uh, then come with Jesus on the Galilee. You know, Jesus came and checked him out and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the end of my little message. I was just searching out uh, the battle axe of the Lord, the swing of the axe. I found this song. It all came through just uh, through uh, Spotify. <laughs> Glory to God. The spirit of might landed on me. I went running through the park. I never ran that far in a long time. I ran like from my house down the back lane around, you know, halfway around this park. And then I just I slowed down. I didn't want to die, you know. <laughs> My heart might have given it out. And I, God still wants you to use you to be the battle axe in His hand <laughs> to destroy, to pull down, to root out, pull down and destroy everything that just like that is an offense to the kingdom. Or that's not even the right word, but Hallelujah, Shaba. Let's just take a drink right now of the living waters through your heart. You don't have to do anything outwardly. It's an inward act of just receiving. A manifest presence of God, receiving your living God, and just letting Him do what He wants to do. I hope this word encouraged you. No, don't be a coward. The cowards written in Revelation were at the outside of the gate. Be like Jonathan, that berserker. He's like, whether they tell us to come up or stay there, we'll come to you. We're gonna go. We're gonna go destroy these guys for putting fear into the armies of the living God, so to speak. <laughs> you know, when Jonathan took his staff and he dipped it in honey, his eyes were enlightened. <laughs> you know, you need the honey of his presence just to enlighten your eyes. Put eye salve upon your eye, the saliva of Jesus. <laughs> Swing of the axe.